Welcome everyone. I hope you're all having a good day so far and doing what you can to stay safe. Thank you for joining me and thank you to EJ Prescott for setting up this webinar so that we're able to get together today. My name is Sam Justice and I'm one of the engineers here at Presto Geosystems. We manufacture erosion control, stormwater management, and porous pavement products. We're located in northern Wisconsin and work closely with EJ Prescott throughout their territory in the Northeast on a wide variety of projects. Most of you know the great team at EJ Prescott through one of their local offices, so we're going to dive right into the presentation so that there are enough time for questions at the end. If you do have questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat window and that way I can answer them once I'm finished. So the focus of our presentation today is going to be on protecting soil slopes from natural erosive forces. So very quickly, here are some of the things that I hope you get out of today's presentation. Understand the causes of surface erosion. Learn about the GeoWeb system, including how flexible and versatile it is, and know that the system can work on steep slopes and along shorelines. And just so that everybody is aware, this presentation is going to be about surface slope erosion only. We're not going to be talking about global stability of slopes today. So we're going to get started with a very quick overview of the broad causes of slope erosion. Global failure can occur at any time, usually because of an existing underlying problem within the slope. Heavier than anticipated loading at the crest, Oversaturation of the soil due to rain or seismic activity are some possible reasons why a slope may globally fail. Water flowing through the slope, typically at dam embankments or along reservoir slopes, can cause erosion through piping. Piping can occur anywhere within the slope and can have a minor impact all the way up to causing total collapse. Water flowing down the face of a slope, originating from rain or sheet flow from above the crest, can cause rills and gullies. High intensity rainfall events and their resulting runoff can easily strip soil from a slope surface. Wave action along shorelines can quickly eat away at soil slopes. This can be a huge concern for homeowners and businesses that have built up along valuable high cost shorelines. And finally, while not truly considered erosion, misapplying erosion control blankets or turf reinforcement mats can lead to sl slope surface failure and require installation of a more stable slope protection system. So now with all of that refreshed in our minds, we're going to move on to describing the GeoWeb 3D system. The GeoWeb system consists of two main attributes. The first is the cell or container size. The cells come in three diameters, small, medium, and large, with cell heights from 3, 4, 6, and 8 inches. The cell size and depth are going to depend on your project details and loading requirements. There are also five section lengths to best fit your project needs. The ultrasonically welded seam, where all of the connecting points are, is a very important function of the geocell. The stronger the seam, the better the performance of the geocell. A stronger seam allows for heavier infill material, steeper and taller slopes, and better, all, better overall lifetime performance. The strength of the panel or the strip material is also critical to the strength and performance of the geocell system. If the geocell is too stiff, the confinement properties will be diminished and failure comes in catastrophic mode rather than yielding. So our second main attribute of the GeoWeb system is going to be the infill material. There are three main infill types for slopes, depending on the type of protection that's needed. Topsoil, aggregate and granular slopes, and concrete. In most cases, the GeoWeb system allows for the use of on-site materials without the need to import fill. The system components are going to be all of the supporting accessories that help the GeoWeb system protect the slope. So I've got a simplified diagram here to show how the different system components interact with the GeoWeb panels to form a complete system. We're going to talk about each of these components more next. So to begin, we have our slope with some standard dimensions. The first thing to go down is the geosynthetic layer, which can be a geotextile, a geomembrane, geogrid, or any similar product. Then the GeoWeb panels are put in place. Note how the GeoWeb panels have a horizontal turn near the top of the slope. 
This is important for crest anchorage and erosion control. We have two different options for anchoring. One is using stakes or rebar anchors. These are placed mid-slope and at the crest, and the number and spacing of the stakes is going to be project dependent. Our other option is to use tendons and a crest dead man, and with the dead man being a buried pipe, concrete anchors, or earth or rock anchors at the crest. The geoweb is then filled in with your desired infill material, and if vegetated, an erosion control blanket is used until the vegetation is fully established. The Atra key is going to be the first component to a completely integrated system, connecting each individual panel of the geoweb into a single web that covers the entire slope. It allows for faster installation of the geoweb system and lasts the lifetime of the project, ensuring that the slope is protected and that the GeoWeb system won't fail under anticipated loads. The specific engineering values of the Atra key will ensure that the system holds up to loading over time without the corrosion seen in staples or the failure of underperforming cable tie systems. As slope angles increase, the driving force of the infill material exceeds the available frictional resisting force and additional anchorage is required. The Atra anchors hold the GeoWeb panels to the slope and penetrate into the ground. If corrosion resistance is required due to project conditions, maybe you're in a saline environment, Presto has an HDPE Atra speed stake that's designed to work exclusively with the GeoWeb system. We can supply the Atra stake clips for use with a half inch rebar, so number four rebar, as shown in the photograph, and can be driven by a Hilti hammer drill. For steep slopes, for slopes where the native soil is highly erodible, or if you're over a surface that can't be punctured, such as a geomembrane liner, tendons can be used. The Atra tendon clip transfers the load from heavy infill materials to the tendons and then up to the crest anchorage system. Only the Atra tendon clip is specifically designed to fully transfer safely and securely the forces placed upon the geoweb. Every accessory and every feature has been designed and tested specifically to work together so that we go from problem to design to construction solution with a system where the modeling replicates real world forces. The GeoWeb works in multiple ways to protect the sur slope surfaces. It prevents significant movement of the soil by confining that soil to individual cells or containers. By separating the soil into smaller chunks, the system resists mobilization of the entire slope face due to hydraulic loads and prevents soil erosion. Now, this is an important point. Proper installation of the GeoWeb system includes embedding the panels into the crest of the slope. This prevents the water from flowing underneath the panels and undermining the system. So no rills or gullies will form beneath the GeoWeb system and lead to failure. The system provides a way to fully vegetate slope surfaces that otherwise couldn't support sustainable plant life and increases the overall slope stability by interlocking with the vegetative root zone. Vegetated slopes are the most popular option for slope protection because they can result in the most attractive slopes with little to no maintenance required. Permeable hard armor slopes can be installed where high rainfall is in anticipated or when construction projects are located in arid locations. And this approach can aid in the design of the project by limiting runoff from the slopes and allowing the water to permeate through to the underlying soil. And impervious hard armor slopes with concrete infill are going to be most beneficial with very high water flows and they can be best used at dam spillways or along channel walls. So here's a list of some of the typical projects we see using the GeoWeb slope protection system. This is an exhaustive list by any means, but it does give a good idea of the range of applications that the GeoWeb system can be used for. So going forward, I'm going to be using mostly case studies to show how the GeoWeb system can be applied to different application types. So our first application type is going to be vegetated slopes. The slope embankment behind a row of houses was beginning to erode due to high rainfall events. Because of the existing houses on one side and a road on the other, the embankment couldn't be graded down to prevent erosion, so the GeoWeb system was chosen to help. 
The existing vegetation was stripped from the slope face and a geotextile was placed on the surface. A geotextile is not always required when using topsoil as an infill material, and in fact, sometimes you really don't want one because it, it, could, it could impede deep root growth underneath the system. But in this case, the geotextile was used because the existing subgrade was not beneficial for vegetation growth and the geotextile provided some separation. The geo panels are spread out over the slope face to provide complete coverage. The tendons are run through the panel and tied off to the crest anchorage method of choice, in this case, case earth anchors. The workers are currently connecting the individual panels with the atrochies to complete the cohesive system. And the panels are filled in with nutrient-rich topsoil to allow for vegetation growth. The panels should be fully filled so that the plastic isn't visible, but it shouldn't be overfilled since any soil above the panels is going to be subject to erosion, which is obviously what we're trying to avoid. And you can seed either by mixing seeds in with the soil or by hydro seeding after everything is in place. A couple months later, the grass is fully grown in, completely camouflaging the geoweb panels. The embankment is now protected against erosion so the homeowner can enjoy their patio in peace with no fear of a sudden landslide off the slope. The widening of a road around the south end of Lake Winnipesaukee created a 52 foot long one to one slope directly adjacent to a roadway. With the help of assistance from EJ Prescott, the town's highway department was able to do the installation themselves without needing a specialized contractor. The slope was hydro seeded with native species, including a wildflower mix, and was completely vegetated just three weeks after installation, so a very quick project without major interruptions to the service of the road. So our next application type is going to be aggregate filled slopes. This was a steep slope adjacent to a railroad track. Here, vegetation was not enough to hold the slope in place after several record rainfall events completely saturated the soil. The existing vegetation was removed and the slope was graded with a spider excavator before placement of the geoweb system. A non-woven geotextile was placed underneath and this helps to keep the aggregate in place and prevents it from getting underneath the geoweb panels, which could cause damage to the system and cause uplift. So here we can see the crust anchor trench, which was for the tendon and dead man system. We saw this back in that diagram earlier in the presentation. So the dead man is going to be sized based on, sized based on project specifications and load requirements. And the trench is very important for preventing water from eroding the soil underneath the geoweb system. So the geotextile and geoweb panels should also be terminated in this trench. Saves on crest space as well. The geoweb sections can expand like an accordion, and the tendons can be threaded through those unexpanded sections for easy installation, and then secured to your crest anchorage. A single worker can carry an unexpanded section of geoweb, so it's in your best interest to get as much done before they're expanded. After the tendons are inserted and the atro tendon clip load transfer devices are connected, the geoweb sections are then draped over the slope face and secured with the atro keys. Enough panels are pre-connected to reach the full length of the slope, and the atro keys are able to connect two unexpanded sections of geoweb. And again, we do recommend that as much can be that can be done at the crest do to limit the amount of slope side work. So side-by-side -side connections were made after all of the panels were laid on the slope face. And this connects all of the panels and creates a single slope protection system. With a shallower slope, the crewman could walk on the slope to connect the sections, but in this case, a man lift was used for safety and efficiency. Presto usually recommends that the panels are filled from the top to the bottom of the slope. And this ensures that there's not an undue amount of weight pulling at the bottom of the panels, which could damage the system. And also note that you can put a load on the geoweb panels immediately after they're filled. So there's no problem with the worker standing on the panels here. And here's our final solution. This is a permeable aggregate slope that requires no maintenance. 
and it's perfectly all right for the GeoWeb panels to be visible as you see here. It's not going to affect the system performance. The permeable aggregate reduces water runoff and eliminates the potential for fallen vegetation on the track. So our last main application type that we're going to cover today are concrete slopes. Concrete filled GeoWeb or hard armor slopes are best used when you know that there's going to be high water flow across the system. Here's a channel project that takes the water runoff from a rail intermodal yard. The GeoWeb system replaced a design that had six inches of reinforced concrete channels and grout bags for the two to one slope protection. The GeoWeb system was a value engineered solution due to cost overruns and using the system saved the owner a couple million dollars, but more importantly, sped up construction and allowed the yard to be in service much quicker than was originally anticipated. The side slopes of the channel used three inch deep GeoWeb, anchored with stakes because the slopes were short and relatively flat. The bottom of the channel used four inch GeoWeb so it could support vehicle access loads. This is another way that the flexibility and versatility of the GeoWeb system can be used to create the right solution for your project requirements. The GeoWeb panels act as the formwork for the concrete, so there's no need to build any additional forms, which can be tricky on slopes and would extend the overall construction time. The concrete is poured from top to bottom and the cells hold the concrete in place and prevent it from slumping and creating areas of uneven thickness. And speaking of thickness, an advantage of the GeoWeb system is that it assures constant concrete thickness with no voids or overfills. Thing to note is the pore pressure buildup is always going to be a concern underneath concrete structures. So this project included drilling weep holes through the set concrete to help relieve that pressure. Always something to consider when you have a concrete structure. And here we can see the full extent of the project, which was more than a million square feet of GeoWeb panels, and it saved the railroad a significant amount of money and installation time. So the last section here is something I just want to highlight quickly, and that's going to be how steep that slopes can get and still be protected against erosion. This was a project along the Pan American Highway in Peru, where the slope was on a terrace of a quarter horizontal to one vertical, about 75 degrees. So this is obviously pretty unique because these terraces were actually hand compacted to that angle. So these aren't natural slopes, as one can imagine. The project required tendons through every row of the geoweb panels due to the steepness and the weight of the infill. The earth anchors were used at the crest of each terrace because a dead man trench wasn't going to fit along the narrow crest area. And they chose to use a biaxial geogrid beneath the panels for additional soil control. And then here's the final product. Vegetation has taken hold and the slopes are stable, even at such an extreme angle. So a great application if you know that you don't have a lot of space. So our very last section today that we're going to touch on is going to be protecting shorelines. And this is something that's definitely a concern in many areas that experience small to moderate or potentially even significant wave action. So this project was about building up a walking trail along a shoreline. The area had seen significant erosion with the trail section almost completely washed away, making it unsafe to use and rather unsightly. The park rangers were constantly trying to have to rebuild the trail after large storms, and clearly nothing was going to last long. The geoweb panels were placed over the slope leading down to the normal water line and across the flat crest area in what would become the walking trail surface. This is a great feature of the geoweb system because it can protect against erosion and provide a stable, usable surface. We didn't really talk about the GeoWeb system for load support today, but if you have questions about it, feel free to ask and we'd be more than happy to help. So a small aggregate stone was used as the infill to allow the water to infiltrate through. This is a really helpful feature along shorelines because it promotes water flow without disturbing and eroding the stone at the surface. We've done quite a bit of testing on stone-filled GeoWeb systems and we'll be able to help you determine the size of stone that's required to prevent washout. When confined in the GeoWeb panels, the stone size is going to be quite small, 
Think around two inches in diameter compared to large, expensive riprap stones that may be up to 18 inches in diameter. And here's the final surface, a clean looking trail and a slope that's safe for people to walk on. Because the aggregate is confined within the GeoWeb panels, maintenance is going to be very low without needing to rebuild constantly. Our last project today shows the GeoWeb system along a shoreline embankment of a large pond, so pretty shallow wave action. It's also a vegetated system and was used to help stabilize the embankment and prevent further erosion. The soil was stripped of vegetation to allow for installation of the GeoWeb system, which was done quickly by a landscaping crew. Sheet piles were put in place to allow for a dry construction environment. And this time, the GeoWeb panels were anchored using stakes because the slope angle and slope height were very low. The GeoWeb system was filled in with native soil from the pond so that the same plants would grow over this area, creating a seamless look. And once the GeoWeb system is in place, the sheep piles were removed, flooding the area. And now there's a thriving water garden in place with a much more attractive and stable shoreline that requires very little maintenance. And this shows that you, the presence of water and wave action doesn't limit your infill options. You can use the material you want to achieve the look that you're going for while still pr protecting against that wave erosion. So in summary, the GeoWeb 3D soil confinement system has a great flexibility of design and a variety of infills to meet your project needs. Steep slope protection or shorelines with wave action are not out of the question when using the GeoWeb system. And this is a complete system solution for ease of installation and peace of mind. The engineering team here at Presto Geosystems, including myself, work closely with landscape designers and engineers, offering a free project evaluation service for any slope or erosion control project. We're gonna analyze your site-specific data and offer a recommendation that will meet your project needs. And within one to two business days, we can provide a complete design evaluation, including anchorage requirements and geotextile recommendations. And we're gonna work with you to get the best design for your project. So my contact information is here if there are any questions that come up later and info for EJ Prescott for asking questions about pricing and local support. A follow-up email will be coming to you in a few days, so keep an eye out for that, as well as this recorded webinar for review or to share with those who may have missed this presentation. And if it's eligible, you've earned a half PDH credit for being here today, and that follow-up email is going to provide instructions on how you can receive your certificate. So I'm going to go through the chat window and answer any questions that have come through. Okay, I see a question here asking about what type of vehicles can run over the GeoWeb system when it's vegetated. Um, so great question. So if you do want to do maintenance on your slope, if it's shallow enough that um, you can run sort of vehicles over it, any type of standard lawnmower and uh, lawn maintenance equipment is going to be acceptable to run over the system. You're not going to damage the panels with the lawnmower blades or anything like that. You can also get um, small vehicles such as uh, small pickup trucks or cars and ATVs or four-wheelers to drive over this system without damaging the panels. So you can have access uh, to your entire slope face if needed. Um, and follow up to that was uh, about volunteer vegetation or any sort of invasive species that may need to be removed. So yes, if you are seeing um, weeds or uh, small bushes or anything that you don't want on your slope face starting to, uh, to grow there, you can either walk up to it or you can drive uh, that lawnmower or that ATV to those locations and do your, your standard uh, vegetation maintenance without damaging the GeoWeb system. See, there's also a question about how um, woody the, the, the slopes can be, whether trees and large bushes can be there. You can have um, larger vegetation. Um, a lot of our photos today showed grasses and you know just small flowering vegetation. That's going to be probably the most typical. But if you want to have trees or if maybe you already have a large tree on a slope face that you don't want to remove, you can have those on the slope. Um, you can either 
cut out a section of the GeoWeb panels to fit the root ball of a tree or bush into the slope if your installation is already complete, or you can flex the GeoWeb panels around an existing tree or obstacle um, and then reconnect them on the other side. So this is uh, a way to make sure you still get a, all the erosion protection that's needed while keeping some of that larger vegetation. You don't want the entire slope to be trees or be heavily wooded uh, because then there isn't going to be room for the GeoWeb panels. You do need the majority of the slope to be somewhat cleared and then filled in with uh, grass and flower vegetation, but you do have the ability uh, to have some larger vegetation trees and bushes if that's what you're looking for. There was a question about pricing. Um, so we sell everything um, through EJ Prescott and their territories. We do not sell direct. So if you have questions about maybe a budget estimate for a project or you want to know um, contractors who have uh, worked with this system before that you can reach out to or maybe you're looking for a project in your local area that you can go see, EJ Prescott's going to be um, your best option for that. They're going to be the ones who are able to provide you with that information. We've been working with EJ Prescott for quite a few years now, and they're all very knowledgeable about our project products and how they can be used for your projects and applications. So they're going to be a great resource for you to reach out to if you have questions. Um, about whether it could be applicable or if you have installation questions, anything like that. They're going to be a great option. Um, and then the last thing, if you have specific project details, um, you know, not just general questions, feel free to reach out either to myself or to EJ Prescott um, and we'd be able to help you determine if the GeoWeb system is going to be appropriate for your application and then help you narrow down all of those design choices, so the, the small, medium, large cell size, what depth, what infill, we'll be able to help you determine all of that to make sure it's going to be appropriate and the best solution for your site. So if you do have some of those more specific questions, um, feel free to reach out um, at any time and we'd be happy to help with that. So I see that that's all the questions. So thank you everyone for attending today. I hope you all have a good rest of your day and hopefully we will hear from you in the future. Bye now.